guest, Nick Bova of uh, Berkshire Hathaway, and we're going to just, uh, there's a lot of jibber jabbering going on about, um, you know, COVID-19, and, you know, we've been into it for a few weeks, so we wanted to just try to, um, wanted to try to interview in a couple realtors that are out there of all different um, areas of the country, and, um, the city that I live in, Pittsburgh, and just try to get an idea on what they're seeing. So uh, we're going to begin here soon. I'm waiting for Nick Bova to uh, come on the call, come on the uh, broadcast, and kind of get his take on uh, what's going, what he's seeing on his end. Anybody have any questions on what's going on? Can everybody hear me okay? Ben, can you hear me okay? All right. Now we're getting there. I'm in Florida. Uh, Passion Glass. Yeah, I'm in Florida. I came down to Miami um, about two weeks ago. Got out of Pittsburgh right before the... Um, yeah, right about the same time as the collapse, we'll call it, uh, the stay-at-home order. <laughs> so I've been out here for about two weeks, and then, um, I mean, Airbnb is so cheap that I decided to just stay down here, um, and I just negotiate with the Airbnb every week uh, to extend my stay for, a, and the amount I pay goes down and down and down. Kind of waiting for Nikki. So, um... I'm probably gonna stay down here to the end of the month because there's no reason to come home. I mean, I understand it's snowing in Pittsburgh. Um, hail the other day and then 70, 70 degrees the other day. I mean, it's 74 degrees as a low here in Miami. 94 was a record heat um, every day today. Come on, Nick, where are you at, buddy? <laughs> where are you at, Ash and Glass 710? Nick, you got a, there's somewhere where you got a request to come on um, the live thing, and then I have to accept it. If you don't hit that request, Nick, it's not going. It's not going to work. No one's going to see you, or we're not going to be able to interact. So that's a nice thing. Uh, that's the thing about live is there is no um, testing this. That was so, so nice. Sarah placed the order. Oh, Mon City. <laughs> How's the weather in Mon City? Boba, it's not giving you an option to join um, the broadcast or request to join the broadcast. There should be a box there somewhere. What's up? SC Riley. Invite you in. I don't know how to invite you in. Go live. There we go. Go live. There we go. Mr. Four One Two. Yeah, buddy. There it is. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I signed in with the iPhone today, man. What's going on? I uh, didn't want to use my my regular phone in case I get text messages. It'll blow it up. So what's up? Great point. Yeah, great point. So how are you doing over there in uh, Pittsburgh? Doing great, man. It's uh, it's sunny. We had a little bit of snow today. I, I hear you uh, give the forecast there for a minute. So I, I have sleeves on because it's still cold here. So we're all <laughs> not as fortunate. <laughs> so but, for those uh, of you yeah, it's uh, not very tropical here, man. So are you doing well? Um, we're doing amazing down here. I mean, obviously, I'd much rather be working, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about now. So the, those of you that don't know Nick Bova, he's one of my good friends and realtor. We've done a, a deal or two together. Uh, Nick, what area of town do you primarily um, work in for the people that do not know you yet? Can you my volume up? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? A little background yeah. voice. I uh, said so for those of you, my people that do not know you, what area of town of Pittsburgh are you uh, primarily in? So primarily in the South Hills, uh, Pittsburgh, South Hills area, you know, depending on the clients, uh, you know, referrals, things like that. We, you know, we do a 30 mile radius, but really, uh, 
myself and my agents, we work specifically in the South Hills in the city. So and I've been at this for 17 years, man. You've been doing this for 17 years. Yeah, the first couple of years, I still I was didn't want to give up my other career. But uh, and then about 12 years ago, I said it's time. So I got you. So what made you decide to take the leap? Because I, if I'm correct, that wasn't exactly the best time to become a full time realtor. No, uh, back then it wasn't as all, it wasn't at all. So quick story. I was a construction land surveyor. So, yes, I used to get dirty for a living. <laughs> uh, I did. Uh -huh. I had boots and everything, man. I used to uh, work on a lot of projects around the city and work with a lot of major develop uh, builders, developers, that kind of thing. And I just said I wasn't happy anymore. Uh, my daughter was just born and I was like, I think it's time for a change. And then real estate market kind of tanked and you go from making a decent living to like 12 grand a year. It was tough, but the strong survive, brother. And that's what happened. So I, mean, I think I think there's a... Um... I think if it was handed to you, it, it would be you wouldn't be as good as you are now. If that makes sense. No, it's insane. Yeah, that's. I think that's with anything. You gotta, you gotta fight your way to get to where you are and uh, just practice good business, and a reason you know why you are where you are. So that's what we do, man. We just gotta, gotta grind through it. Thank you. Um, so for those of you just joining, I want to give a couple minutes for everybody to get on board. This is episode one of my Instagram live. I'm going to try doing a bunch of different episodes and we're going to, we're going to hit the nail on the head, man. COVID-19 is what is the elephant in the room. We're not going to skirt around it. We're not going to not talk about it. I reached out to Nick today and asked him earlier if he mind coming on and just answering a few questions. This isn't going to be too terribly long. If you guys have questions, please feel free to put them in the bottom. Nick and I will answer them. Um, question number one, and you know, a lot of inner office Zoom calls and Zoom webinars, everybody he seems to be asking and i'm going to ask you nick what um you know what have you been doing during quarantine um what do your days look like so uh you get a little bit extra sleep uh everybody obviously you and a lot of other people are trying to figure out ways to work out at home if you don't have access to gym so my uh, little body boss rubber band kit came from yep. amazon finally uh so i have <laughs> that i was using like jane fonda workout bands if anybody's that old and knows what that is that's all i could find at target but uh Maria's home as well, so we. I actually set up another office in the house where I am now, like a little media room. I got camera, everything set up, but uh, we still, we still work. We we talk to our existing clients. We talk to. We go through, and we've been calling all of our past clients to see how they were doing, how they're doing with all this. Uh, just checking in with them, asking how their families are. Uh, we're doing that with our vendors, uh, the people we work with, the people we. Anyone that we're in touch with, we just want to make sure that they're okay. Uh, and, of course, obviously, you know, we let them know that we're here to help them uh, when the time comes and that we can actually get back out and meet with people and work. But uh, mainly since we're in the situation that we're in, uh, we just we got to stay busy and, and focus on the positive that's going to come out of this and people are going to be stronger and, and uh, you know, business is going to be good. Let me drill down on this and, and ask you for a little more detail for those newer agents, um, brand new agents, agents or people becoming agents or agents that have been in business and not, you know, not selling a lot of homes. Um, give me some detail. Like, do you have, do you guys call five people a day? Do you take the first 10 minutes or are you just walking by your phone and like, I'm going to call a client? I mean, break, give me a little bit of detail if you don't mind. So my routine lately, I, I started a new routine at the beginning of the year where I was making all my calls in the morning. And then of course, depending how things go, you're a real estate agent, things get into your schedule. Closings get rearranged, business calls, different meetings get set up. So you just got to say, hey, I'm going to make these calls per day and fit them in. You know, some people call on people really early. Uh, I like to get my clients when they're not busy, follow up with them, or when you're calling looking for some new business to do that, uh, you know, to get them at a good time. But it's important for a newer agent to start the habits now. Um, when I started, I didn't have the discipline that I have now. And we all need more dis discipline. But start those habits now as a new agent, and you will grow with them, and they'll just be a part of you. Where I, you know, a couple of years ago, I had to develop really good habits and keep going. Um, where it's just important to start when you're new. Like start with that first database, the first person you call, put them in, and look and say, wow, I only have five people. Uh, and, and that's. I just, to, I just want to confirm your, your, your phone calling. Phone, yeah, phone calling, text. Uh, we phone call, text, and we email. And on here, too, uh, Instagram messages, uh, social media, big part of your business, big part of my business. And for real estate agents that aren't using that, aside from just, um, you know, having fun on it, it, it is a big part of business. And it's not even 
about real estate content constantly. You know, we love to see right. the pets. We love to see the cars going somewhere, just goofing around, being human, uh, showing people that, you know, it's just not always all business, I think helps. And again, developing that as a newer agent is an important, good habit because they have all the, all the technology. And Brian, if, we, if it was 20 years ago, could you imagine doing this business then with the multi-list books? You had to wait when listings come on. Like when I first got in, we still had multi-list books. You flip Dude, through and then navigation. If I didn't have navigation, I honestly would not get my real estate license. Like I couldn't imagine looking at a map and trying to line up ten properties to show with a map. Well, in, in my previous field, that's like you know going to different jobs. We had map books, man. I had a, a Magellan map book that we used, or we'd print out MapQuest before you left your office. Oh um, my God! No thanks. Different times, man. Totally different times. So that leads me to another question with personal and family. So, you know, a lot of people are having a lot of time with their husband, wives, significant others, and their kids and their pets. You know, whenever we get back to the norm, do you see, like, um, it's a positive to have all that time. Do you see maybe, like, a little depression or a little withdrawal, a little negative whenever you leave your kids for back to normal for 12 hours a day? Um, so Dog. our situation is a little unique. Oh. One of the pets came in. Um, so my kids are in a separate quarantine because my wife and I have shared custody. So we're, we're very strict on all the quarantine and everything like that. So my kids, I see them and I kind of see them from a distance when I visit them. OK, just because we're this is we're taking it very seriously as it should be. Uh, but I, I think like it's going to be a big surprise for all of our pets when we all go back to work and we're out like, where the hell did they go? Like, right. You know, we we know how they feel right now. You look out the window, I'll go all day going. I want to. Um, I want to see people and that's kind of, you know, what, what's going on with us right now. And I think it is going to be a little bit, a uh, little bit shocking and, and to get motivated and get out there again, but I'm looking forward to, to doing it as everybody else, you know, getting out there and being now these, again. Now these many mics, my next bullet point in that is, you know, for your buyers and sellers, for your clients, what are you physically doing for them? Now your sellers, what are you doing? Your buyers that you've been showing houses to that haven't purchased something or in, People that are in the midst of a transaction, what are you actually doing for them? So in the midst of the transaction, we're just we're letting them know that whatever step that they're in, and right now you can't be in a lot of steps, you can't have a home inspection, but we're just touching base with them once or twice a week just to talk. Or if they say, hey, if you have a question, text me. Just I'll text, hey, say, you know, hey, how's it going? Because people right now, we need to hear from each other since we can't go out and make contact. So just a simple hello, but keep them up to date on what's going on. Uh, you know, saying, hey, go in and check your searches today. If it's someone that's pending, we're just making sure that they're still going with their lending process, telling them the title's okay, uh, that kind of thing. If it's someone that's newly looking, we're saying, hey, let's hop on, let's do a Zoom, let's do a FaceTime, let's talk about the process. So we're doing uh, online consultations with sellers, with buyers, or just phone consultations. So planning ahead to make sure that they're ready and they understand the process and we you know, obviously we've done that before this but we would do it in person um i just i don't meet a lot of people at the door like we don't like we meet people in person or the referral and we start the process before we get out there and turn the doorknob you know and i think with everything the way that this is now that's gonna be more important to come because i think people are going to want less people in their houses excuse me dog I'm talking um <laughs> more people, less people in their houses later man like Serious buyers, no tire kickers, man, because a lot of people are just meeting buyer leads that they get off of whatever source showing up at the door. It's dangerous for realtors, dangerous for sellers. You don't know who you're meeting. You know, meet them first, man. Get the pre-approved. That's a background check, you know? 100%. Um, so what are you doing for your sellers? So for my sellers, uh, for my existing sellers? Or um, you're yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're just basically showing them the market data, you know, putting them on a search as well so they can see what's coming on the market since their homes are sitting. I'm letting them know that most of my sellers, we are getting, uh, I have a list of people that want to get out there and show as soon as they can. So I'm just telling my sellers, like, wait, be patient. We're going to, you know, we'll put some things on Facebook. Um, I don't want to drown people in listings on Facebook because everybody's looking every day and it's, and it's fine. Uh, but I just tell my sellers, like, I'm going to put things out there with your home. We're going to market it. We're still doing our job. We're still making phone calls, talking to people and realtors saying, hey, you have anybody for this house? When it's ready, you know, we welcome you to come show it. So just contact, just staying in contact with everybody.
I'm going to throw a little tip and trick out there for people that may not know. Um, Realtor.com, when you have a listing, you can um, set up an automated market report to go out weekly to your sellers on your behalf. Um, you don't have to be anything special. I don't pay Realtor.com at all, so it must just be for the common agent. I don't think it has anything to do with Remax or paying anything extra because um, one of my sellers just emailed me, replied back to that report, and uh, we grabbed a phone call and talked about the market. And you know, people were worrying about, the, and we're going to move on to the, my last point, which is where do you see the market going? I just want to lead into that with this okay. phone call um, that I have with my client. And that is that don't worry about the days on market. I mean, you get, you're getting a pass. I mean, it's been said in webinars that I've been on that you're not in this crisis because of a collapse of financial in, inconsistency or in, incorrect decision somebody made that led us to this. Everybody knows the pause button is hit. And I even saw online that the state of California, their MLS has frozen days on market. So they're not even counting days on market for listings anymore. That's crazy. Yeah, that is. And I think that's maybe something that the multi-list, our, our multi-list is going to do, and I'm hoping. Uh, but here's the thing. A, a lot of people, exactly, a lot of people that I find that are worried about the days on market are... You're back. Well, you had a bad connection there. It, uh, no, yep. It's the it's the beach. It's the beach wind. But anyway, um, I think that I think agents are so. I, I talked to a lot of our agents in our company, the big agents in Pittsburgh, and I think they're more concerned with days on the market than the actual clients or that are actual sellers because oh it, can, it doesn't make my stats look good well as i always say it's not about me it's about my clients 100%. and i think the house is being out there some people want to withdraw them take them down hide them let people look let people fawn of them let them fall in love with them look at the pictures 150 times take the virtual tour or the matterport walk through it and then come out to buy i don't think days on market are important and everybody knows what we're going through so obviously that house was on for an extra 30 days because so yeah. So last thing I want to talk about is just getting the nitty gritty here. Let's do a prediction. Um, what do you see moving forward with the market um, the next two weeks to the end of the month or, or longer or in beyond that? What is your prediction? I think that what you said earlier, the pause button. I think when the pause button is pushed, things are going to go back to normal. Buyers are going to be out there. And the people that have job security or they can immediately go back to work are going to be ready to buy. And it's going to be just as competitive as it was prior to this. Uh, some people are saying, hey, buy a house sight unseen. Hey, think about it. It's limiting your competition right now. If a house, beautiful house pops up and you want to take the chance and use the contingencies in the agreement, so be it. You're going to be, you won't be against not too many other people making those types of offers. Uh, you know, to buyer, as buyer's agents, would we suggest that? It depends. It's up to the comfort of the buyer. I can suggest it and navigate you through the process properly. But I, I think the market's going to be great. Uh, some folks have said that they think that, you know, it's going to shift the buyers. I don't know. I think the inventory was so, so, so low that the pause button is going to catch it up a bit. And there's still going to be lots of multiple offer situations. All right. I, see, I think the market's like the spring market is just since we've been paused. I think it's going to get pushed back. I think people are going to forgo vacations that they used to in June, July, and August. And I think our spring market, you know, our March, April, May is going to be our June, July, and August. I mean, honestly, I've gone through, I think, two years in a row. I didn't sell one house in July because I don't know, everybody was on vacation, but I think that's going to yep. get pushed back. And then yeah. we're going to have, uh, I, I think the market's like a compressed spring. Think of like a compressed spring. And I think the tension's going to be released at first. The first month or so is going to be a little slow, I think, because uh, I think they're afraid to touch things, let people in their house. Buyers are afraid to go in. Sellers are a lot afraid to let people touch stuff in their house. And then once we get a vaccine or we get through that, like two or three months later, I think that spring is just going to explode. And then we're going to see our spring market in two or three months. What do you, would you agree? Right, I agree 100%. That's exactly what I think is going to happen. I think the value of the house, the home is still going to be there. Uh, I think this is going to change the way we do business about touching things going in. But people that can buy are still going to buy. The health professionals right now on the front lines, thank you. Uh, everybody at the front lines, uh, they're going to be ready. They've earned it. They're, they're cranking in overtime. They're in front of people. If they're thinking about moving. We're going to be here to help. And you know, they're going to be our priority buyers as well. Uh, but I think it's going to be strong. I don't, I don't think, you know, there's, it's not like a 9-11 a thing where there was a crash after that because leading up to that, it's not even nowhere near that because 
back then, prior to that, you could get a mortgage with the worst credit, you know, basically sign and drive, like sign and get a house. And the industry has been in strict since Frank Dodd and all, or Dodd Frank and all that. So that's not, I don't, it's not going to happen. So people shouldn't panic about their homes not selling or value because it, it's going to be strong. Like you said, the spring, boom. I want to ha- I want to make sure we hammer that home with buyers and sellers that are watching this now or in in the future. We are not in this problem because of anything anybody did with finances, dirty credit, bad credit, B loans, and all that. We the market's going to explode slowly once it once the uh, ban is lifted. People have been wanting to buy homes. People are waiting to buy homes. Um, I've been getting offers on my listings. Two people came in super low, like a hundred grand under, and I had to reply back and say, listen. You know, these people don't need to sell their home. It, it, this isn't free for all. This isn't a bonanza. There's not a bunch of foreclosures going to happen. I mean, they're doing, the government's doing a great thing with debt relief and all this other stuff. So we're going to come out of it. Have you seen, have you got any offers on your listings throughout this two, three weeks? Um, I've, I've written offers from properties that we had shown weeks ago prior to all this, prior to when we can't show people that are, we're getting things together because the buyer doesn't have to move quickly. Seller doesn't have to move quickly. But I haven't gotten any sight unseen offers, but I'll tell you, I got a lot of people, again, requesting information. As soon as we can get in, we're getting in. So I'm anticipating to quickly pick up and be busy, you know, when that pause button is hit again. And yeah, I, I think a lot of people. I wrote one offer um, just yesterday and got it accepted. And we wrote it at market value and got it accepted at market value. And, you know, all the, all the dates are TBD, um, TBD right. term. It's just the way it's yeah. going to be. I'm, I'm doing a house right now that's not even on the market. Um, Looked at it prior to all of this. Buyer looked at it, uh, and they said, "Hey, we want it." And they said, "Nick, we want to sell it. Put it together. Let's get it. Let's get it going." Um, so I got a question. Uh, we have somebody that asked the question. Then, are you finding clients and prospects are more interested in actually talking more now than before COVID nineteen? I think he means on the phone. Uh, yeah, I think so. People want to communicate more instead of just text. Because again. You know, people, you know, people are at home with their families or at home and they're maybe if they're just working from home, they're just bombarded all day long with the walls inside their house or going out and taking walks. They want to hear people's voices. They want to talk to people, whether it's FaceTime, um, you know, more than text. Typically, we all just text. Hey, here it is where now I'm finding like I take notes when I talk to people, but text, it's already there. Emails, it's already there. So now I'm writing down our conversations like, hey, we talked about this. So and I my notebook is has more in it because actual phone conversation so yes um new agents all agents get on the phone with your buyers talk to them and just you know let them know that you're there to help if they need something during this and when they're ready you can help them their family members everybody yeah i think there's more to talk about for sure with this uh, additional contingency so to speak yeah the um, all right tell me. Okay. Kelly Varofsky, uh, not really a question, on a REMAX agent. She goes, I think it's fine for buyers, but not so much for sellers. Kelly, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. You mean the um, COVID thing? Um, I, I don't know. I, again, I think Nick and I are on the same page. I think it's just a pause button. I don't think um, sellers' homes' values are going to go down when the pause button is lifted. I, and honestly, I honestly think it's going to be... I think they're going to stay the same, if not go up, because there is like a um, corral of people waiting to buy, even with unemployment. And I think it's just, I, I predict that it's going to be crazy for the rest of the year. Everybody's going to go back out. Everyone's going to go back out. Go back out, spend money at those small businesses. I plan on doing some Instagram lives as well, interviewing business owners. Like, we're excited to see when we get back out there. Go to your restaurant, go to your bar, shop at your store, all of that. And at that point, people are going to be out spending money. They're going to spend money on housing as well. Uh, things that are essential food, water, and shelter. We provide shelter, unfortunately, not to get into politics. Our governor doesn't agree, uh, but, and I understand that why, because if you give a realtor, if you give a realtor an inch, they'll take a mile. Someone will have an open house, Brian, and have a bowl of mixed nuts and have everybody come in this Sunday, because that's what will happen. So it's, it can be done, but I'm just worried about my clients. It's not about me working in, in income. I worry about my clients that need to sell so they can get into the assisted living and they need the money and now they can't close well they can we could talk about that another day um you know as long as things are done according to the governor or the people that literally gave up their homes they're in extended stays they're in airbnbs waiting to get into the new house that is a problem we're gonna have a lot of homeless people where people's things are in a pod and the only thing they have is an air mattress and a toothbrush and the clothes on their backs right now because i've talked to a lot of people 
and they're really frightened by this last thing that you, if you didn't have a, a contract written on March 6th that you may not be able to close. Right. Yes. Kelly actually clarified. She goes, I don't want to have sellers accept an offer less than they can get with multiple offers once uh, we are up and running. So how do, what do you think about that, Nick? Um, again, it's, uh, it's, it's, take, it's picking what you choose. Um, if someone wants to make a good offer now, if it's not the right thing to do, if the numbers don't make sense, and you think you can get more later, so be it. Wait it out. Like, yeah, I agree. Because, uh, again, I think multiple offers are coming. Yeah, Kelly, I've had offers on my listings, and uh, I, I recommend it to my sellers. They not they do not take it. I liken it to this. Accepting an offer now is the same as in a regular market, accepting an offer of the home sale contingency. You're pulling your house off the market waiting for somebody to sell a home. If you accept an offer now, waiting with the COVID-19, you're just you know waiting for it to clear. So I tell my sellers, if it's not full price, we're not going to accept it. I mean, we're just going to wait for the market to come back. Right. Yeah, um, it's, it's yeah, full price offer. Hey, maybe you want to take it. You know, fit, talk it out with the numbers. But if not, you're probably going to get one over because everybody's ready. And you're really agents. You really got to work with your lender and make sure these buyers are qualified when you're taking them out because people can have a 30 day year old pre approval letter. They wave it in front of you, and they're not working. Good point. So, you're going to get re-pre-approved. But then again, if you're not working, you're, you, mean, you should know you're not going to be able to buy a house. But even people finance cars are foreclosing too. So, Yeah, yeah, big furniture, things like that. Uh, but and, and the other thing that I, I, I want to add in there, Brian, is being positive on social media. If, oh, if there's a handful of agents that get out there and go, sellers are going to lose their ass, people are going to think that, and it's going to happen. That's how, I mean, the market in Pittsburgh has been always affected that way. If something happens somewhere else, we get nervous and we kind of want to make it happen here. But if we don't, we stay positive. Sellers will get what they're looking for and buyers are going to be happy when they get a home. Uh, we came, we were in a market where people would say to me, Nick, how do I get a great deal on a house? I said, you know how you get a great deal on a house? You get an offer accepted. If you get an offer accepted, that's the deal because there were seven others. Right. You know, that's, that's exactly what I tell buyers. I mean, listen, Back in the day, you're getting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand under was great. Now just getting it accepted, that's a win. Yep, it's a win. You know, people always say, well, hey, Nick, what's the best scenario? How do I get a house? They said, you pay cash, you waive all your contingencies, and you close in two weeks. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't recommend that, but I've had some buyers that say, hey, I got all that, and I'm willing to do it. I can look at the house. I'm a contractor. I, I'm fine. I don't need an inspection. So, But we recommend you get a home inspection. You go the regular, you know, the regular methods. Uh, we as buyers agents help you and walk you through. So, yeah. And Nick has a good point. Uh, fellow realtors, mortgage people, anybody watching this, we're not asking you to lie, but just be positive. You, I mean, there's so much negative, which is there's so much truth, which is the negative on the news, on Twitter, on Facebook. You don't want to be a source of the negative. I mean, they can get enough of that data from other places. You want to be a source of uh, positive. You know, and there's always a positive that's with real estate, even in a down market. It doesn't matter where it's COVID, nine one nine eleven, whatever. You want to be a positive light source uh, on how things are going to turn around, what you're seeing, what they could be doing. I see a lot of people doing short video snippets of, you know, it's spring in Pittsburgh and you should be doing your flower beds and stuff like that. So, Nick, great point. Definitely be positive. Uh, Maria sells homes. Florida down here is uh, lockdown. Realtors are in lockdown. It's the same exact thing as Pittsburgh. They're not allowed to move. I watch a lot of the local Florida news while I'm down here, but they're not allowed to do anything. They were allowed to operate longer into this um, COVID-19 that we were in Pittsburgh, but only by like a couple of days or a week. But it's the same as same as Pittsburgh down here. Yeah, and, All right. Um, so real quick, I, I was talking to some people in banking, some of my friends in banking or clients. A lot of people are coming in, and this is for buyers that are out here watching, saying, was there more inventory? So there's people coming into banks um, talking about trying to get improvement loans right now, close them out so they can go work on their house. Like, we're selling. We've been in our house. We want to get money. We want to use our line of credit. We want to start doing uh, improvements to the home. People are getting Lowe's Home Depot delivered, doing house projects because they're going to sell them. So more inventory coming. Yeah, and something I would make a little prediction here. I'm going to predict that new construction is going to really boom. And why is that? Because nobody's lived in it with their germs. And that, right. mark my word, this is going to be a big problem. There's a lot of potential germaphobes before this that are now germaphobes. And, uh, you know, that touch smell of new construction, the allure of new construction, is going to be a big deal. So realtors should focus on uh, new construction when we get out of this. Yeah. And, and one quick thing, if I could give some advice to realtors with new construction, and I think you're going to agree with this 100%, Brian, is if you're going to do new construction, 
please help the buyer client with new construction. Do not drive by, kick them out of your car, let them roll on the doorstep of the builder and only come back from your paycheck. Because you know what that does? That embarrasses our industry and what we do. You go to the meetings, you help them, you review their cost sheets, their, you explain to them the future tax assessments, you do your job as a buyer's agent. Because a lot of people will say, oh, well, certain builder X doesn't compensate the way they used to anymore. Well, you know why? Because they don't like the backdoor agents that would show up and say, hey, you got to pay me because I showed those buyers uh, 20 houses. Um, no, you don't, sir. So that's one thing I encourage. If you're going to do new construction like Brian and I do and a couple other agents, help the buyers be there. I want to see dirt on your shoes. Provide the fiduciary <laughs> duty. That's your kind of shoe. That's why you got to wear your boots, man. You got to keep them in the trunk. <laughs> keep them in the trunk. All right, so I'm going to leave everybody with one thing. I would like to share a uh, Instagram tip and trick. So if you want to check out smart.bio on Instagram, I just learned it today, smart.bio. If you go to my bio and look, you'll see this like link tree. So what you can do is you only allow one link in um, Instagram in your bio. So if you click on that link, it'll take you to a separate web page where you can put your YouTube, your Zillow reviews, your website, anything you want to put up with the link. So smart.bio. I just learned it today. I just did it today. It's free forever. And then it's part of a different company. Whenever you log in, you'll see it. And, uh, and this company will allow you for a fee now to schedule Instagram posts, which I've never done. It could be kind of cool if you want to start boosting your Instagram a little bit more. And it shows you analytics. And stuff. Now, that will be a pay service. So smart.bio. Check that out. If you have a problem, shoot me a DM and I'll screenshot the uh, website and send it to you after this. Nick, thanks a million. Any parting words? Uh, no, I just want everybody out there to be safe, healthy, and positive. And um, it's Friday, baby. A little bit of happy hour. We're going to hurt anybody. So I can't enjoy the beach, but I enjoyed uh, being on here with you, Brian, and appreciate the, uh, the offer to be here. So uh, be safe and enjoy. And I'll catch Absolutely. you next time. I love you, my friend. If you're ever in the South area, uh, Nick is your man. So everybody stay safe. Thanks, frontline operators. We appreciate you. Ladies, guys.